I welcome you for this NPTEL lectures on earthquake resistant design of foundations. And as you may be aware that this course has been divided into five module and uh, we are uh, working on module th third that is on pile foundation which is most important. And under the pile foundations we have covered these topics that is piles for static vertical load and now discussing the lateral load on piles which is the perhaps the most important part of this course. So, continue with lateral load on piles. Under the lateral loads on piles in the last two lectures we have covered introduction, then conventional method of analysis, elastic method using Winkler approach, solution for, for piles in cohesion less soils. So, up to cohesion loss soils has been already covered. Today we are going to talk on soils for piles in clay and we are, we are going to also consider the degradation of K that is modulus of subgrade reaction that how it degrade with the strain which we will consider for the case of the clay. Then we are going to discuss the design procedure for piles and in the next lecture we are going to talk about numerical examples. So, today let us talk about solution for piles in clay it is basically on the same lines as we have discussed for cohesionless soils, but there is a big difference which we are going to discuss. You may be aware that for the cohesionless soil, it was assumed that the modulus of subgrade reaction linearly varies with the depth. That means, it is increasing with the depth, it is 0 at the ground surface and maximum at the pile tip. However, for clay or cohesive soils it is different. Normally when you have stiff clay then it can be assumed that modulus of subgrade reaction K is constant with the depth while if you consider the soft clay then it is varying linearly with the depth. That means for the soft clay we can have the similar treatment what we have done for cohesionless soils. So, let us talk about uh, the case when the modulus of subgrade reaction is assumed constant for the clay. So, the theory which has been proposed for cohesionless soils, Reach and Matlock have proposed the theory. However, for the clay uh, it was the Davison uh, which was in uh, 1962 and Davison and Gill in 1963 which have given the their hypothesis on the piles in clay. And uh, they have considered initially two layers, but they have considered the same stiffness for both the layers. Now, what is done in this theory? If we assume uh, that uh, modulus of subgrade reaction Kx, that is the value of K with the depth, is constant and it is equal to Kh, which is the value its value at the pile tip, and which can be simply letter can be assumed K, where K is a that means, k is not varying with the depth or k is not uh, varying with the x. So, assuming that and replacing t which we have used for the cohesionless soil with r and then further the coefficient a y we have used for the cohesionless soil is replaced by a y c where subscript c is denoting that the value of a y is for clay. If you are a y without any subscript is normally for cohesionless soils that means, no subscript cohesionless soil, but C subscript is used for cohesive soils this is a uh, normal terminology used in the literature. And then assuming that soil modulus function the value of soil modulus function phi z equal to 1. Here phi z if you recall for cohesive cohesionless soil we have assumed for phi z equal to z. So, I, let me repeat it here that uh, this is for clay, but for the sand case the value of phi z was assumed z this was for cohesionless soils. This was the case for cohesionless soils, while for cohesive soils for phi z is assumed 1 this is for cohesive soils. So, this is the basic difference uh, like which is making the difference ahead. So, once you have let us say for uh, now the equation of motion when you are considering only uh, the, uh, uh, the lateral uh, load without moment. So, a y c. 
So, you have the AYC, the equation of motion can be written using equation number 1 and the equation number 2 is nothing but it is saying phi z equal to 1. So, when you have phi z equal to 1, so k r 4 e i equal to 1. As a result, finally, you end up in the value of r which is relative stiffness factor for this case. If you recall for cohesionless soil, the relative stiffness factor was t which was given by e i divided by eta h to the power 1 by 5. So, this was the case for cohesionless soils. And as usual depth coefficient z is here x by r which was earlier x by t. So, that means this factor r is relative stiffness factor for this case and this factor will be used further for all the analysis. Let us continue with this and what you have? The maximum depth coefficient which is again simply L s by r z max, it was earlier L s by t and suppose if both uh, moment as well as shear is acting on a pile head that means, a uh, lateral load is also acting and the pile head is subjected to a moment also. In that case total deflection y x will be uh, deflection due to the lateral load plus deflection due to moment and which is given by equation 6. The difference come in this equation that instead of t now it is r instead of a y c a y a y c and b instead of b y b y c. So, rest of the things are similar what we have uh, done for cohesionless soils. Finally, the uh, moment m x which is varying with the depth a m c q z r plus b m c m z. Here on uh, uh, in these equations 6 and 7 a y c deflection coefficient for shear load on a free head pile in clay b y c coefficient load on a free head pile in uh, deflection for moment and then a m c moment coefficient for shear load and b m c moment coefficient for moment load. Here all these four coefficients are for the case when pile head is assumed completely free, free in terms of translation as well as rotation. But if you provide restraint on the pile head particularly in the case of slope then these equation will change accordingly as we have discussed for cohesionless soils it is on the similar lines. So, like uh, and uh, for the clay what is the what is called uh, the critical uh, what we call this uh, the minimum length of the pile required so that we can uh, qualify as a long pile that that can be seen from these figures. The, the figure here the first figure shows the deflection and moment coefficient due to the lateral load that is the a coefficients while the second figure is, show, is showing a b coefficients. Let us uh, study a y c first. So, if you see a y c here a y c coefficients are these are the for the these lines are there these are for moments and these coefficients are for for deflection. So, you could you could see that deflection coefficient z when uh, uh, this is uh, this is the case for z max equal to 2 when z max equal to 2 a y c is linearly decreasing with the depth and naturally it, it get end up here because the maximum value of g is z max by 2. However, when so that means for z max equal up to 2 the pile may be considered as rigid pile and because the deflection is linearly decreasing with the depth. However, when you have the higher value of z max when you have 2, 3, 4 and 5 then the it is curved it is not linear and particularly when z max is equal to 5 or more than that then you get the similar curve for uh, 5 and 10 are the same. So, that the uh, so that means more than z max equal to 5 or uh, like you know z max equal to uh, uh, equally uh, even with the 4 if you see the curve for z max equal to 4 and 5 is coinciding here you could see that this is for 2 3 5 and here same thing is here 2 3 4 5. So, the curve which is related to z max equal to 4 and 5 are the same. So, that means if you keep the value of z max more than 4 then it can be treated as a long pile. So, for this case the minimum value so the first check which you one need to apply to apply this theory that L s by r instead of t should be equal to or greater than 4. So, this is the check need to be applied for the clay. Now, continue for the clay uh, so these are the coefficient deflection and moment coefficient continue with this 
Okay, okay. These these are like you know the on the bigger slide. So this is the same thing which is on the last slide. Okay. Then what you have? Uh, continue with this. Uh, it has been observed that uh, there is a lot of effect of strain uh, on clay, particularly on the modulus of subgrade reaction. And with as the level of strain increases, then the modulus of subgrade reaction degrades. Or in other words, we can say that as the deflection increases, because when the deflection is more, it is expected that strain is more. Higher the strain, you will get uh, the degradation and this degradation has been discussed here. So, one of the researchers M window in 1992 developed 5 empirical relationships of modulus degradation with shear strain gamma for free headed piles of different materials embedded in clays of different relative consistency. And the general form of the equations developed by M windows is given from this relation. What is Kh and Kh max? Kh is the value of uh, uh, Kh is the value of the uh, modulus of subgradation at pile tip. However, this value is not a constant rather this varies with strain if even if all other parameters are constant. So, Kh max is the maximum value of this Kh that means at a very low strain when the value of strain is very low then you get Kh max. And this is a function of gamma, gamma is not nothing but in this case the gamma is shown in this uh, equation is shear strain gamma is shear strain. So, as the value of shear strain change then this value of k h will keep changing. The parameter a and b depends on the type of soil as well as type of pile. So, the value of a and b which has been used by these authors has been listed here where a is uh, like you know you could see between 0 0.16 0 0.30 and then the value of a is different 0 0.16, 0 0.3, 0 0.05, 0 0.08 for different type of uh, soil and depending on the type of pile. The same thing is the case for B. So, depending on uh, and because these tests has been conducted on timber and steel pile and three types of pile material is considered for pile timber, steel and pre concrete, pre uh, cast uh, pre stress concrete. While for the soil medium clay and stiff clay and soft clay has been considered. So, you have one 2 and 3 types of soil and 3 types of pile. And with these combinations the value of A and B has given in this table and which is based on experimental data conducted by these researchers. So, this could be. So, the equation 1 indicate you that how you can take into account the effect of strain on, on this modulus of subgrade reaction. But further analysis has been done for this aspect and what has been done? that how we can now the issue comes here first issue comes how you work out the value of a strain gamma how to calculate the value of gamma if you know the deflection or what is the relation between deflection and strain. So, what has been done uh, the part is here that uh, the some of the researcher Kagawa and Kraft in 1980 have reported that more than 70 percent of the pile displacement is concentrated in the 2 pile radius depth that means 2 times of r if I consider r, r as a radius of the pile. So, the 70 percent of the displacement will be in, in the width of in the depth of 2 r and then remaining will be further. So, therefore, the increase in shear strain due to is concentrated in this zone. So, ultimately there is a quantity called strain normal strain normal strain epsilon. So, here it is normal strain. So, normal strain if equation this uh, 2 equation equation number 2 can be simply written as uh, epsilon equal to uh, y divided by 5 r or you can say y divided by 2.5 b. So, that means, strain is simply deflection divided by the 2 times of uh, 5 times of radius or 2.5 times of b. Here then there is a relationship between normal strain and shear strain which is given here. What has been done in this case the value of gamma which is the nor, uh, shear strain is simply gamma is 1 plus nu which is where Poisson's ratio multiplied by the strain. So, using this relationship here and the putting the value of normal strain from the here 
you get equation number third. So, what equation third gives you? The value of shear strain if you know the deflection. Here, Poisson's ratio and width B, which is width B means B will be actually used diameter of the pile here. B will be nothing but for cylindrical pile or circular pile, diameter of pile will be used instead of width. So, using this equation, if you know the deflection, then you can calculate the value of a strain and continue with this. Later on, what has been the post, uh, uh, in equation third, especially for saturated clay, the value of Poisson's ratio can be assumed 0 0.5, and if I put in this equation third equation nu equal to 0 0.5 and then solve then you get the gamma equal to y 1.667 b. So, this equation is the final product where this equation does that it links uh, of course, this is a very simple equation and this links with your deflection with shear strain. So, if you know the deflection then you can calculate the value of shear strain. Then uh, originally it was uh, the case that uh, the original uh, 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 hypothesis given by Kagawa and Kraft was for a small deflection, but then later Prakash and Kumar in 1996 conducting some experiment observed that this equation number 4 can also be appropriate for the uh, relatively large pile deflection also. So, this is fairly can be used this equation, this equation is simple which relates deflection with the uh, for the strain for the clay. Continue with this. Now, <coughs> we will like to have that is uh, what is called uh, the P y method, P is stand for uh, your load and y is deflection. So, basically force deflection method for clays. How we can draw the curve P y curves for the clays and because you know that uh, P y curves are used further and they are used for particularly to find the soil springs for the further analysis for analysis and design. So, the Matlock in 1970 proposed a process of determination of the P y curve in the soft clays. So, Matlock has given for the soft clay and later Rees et al extended this theory for stiff clay. So, one case is for slope soft clay and another is for stiff clay. So, we are going to discuss this issue separately for soft clay and separately for stiff clay. So, uh, and uh, this is Rees et al considered below the water table, later Rees and Wells uh, extended the same thing above the water table. And finally, these results of the experiments uh, were used to develop P y curves which has been represented by Reach in 1984 and Chen in 1994. So, what are the steps to develop this P y curves we are going to discuss. The first step develop the modulus degradation equation with strain for clays from analysis of field data from published literature. Okay, so, whatever the literature is given then you can develop the modulus degradation equation. So, modulus degradation equation for example, similar equation this is modulus degradation equation equation number 1 your equation number 1 is nothing but modulus degradation equation. So, this is the first step. The second step determine the range of kh max. So, we need to find what is the kh max minimum value of kh max maximum value of kh max so, need to be determined. Then next step predict the load deflection curves and then compare these prediction with measured curves and the P y method. So, this has been done by Chen uh, and Prakash, so which we are going to discuss in the next slides. So, this, this is the for steep clay some of the in for the steep clay case k x is assumed constant with the depth yeah that is k x equal to k h and this was the case a uh, theory given by Reach uh, this was uh, Davison and Gill. So, this is the case which we have find out the factor r. A pile is considered long and will behave as a flexible member if the ratio L by R is greater than or equal to 4. Here we, we define the relative stiffness factor with R. If L, R by L by R is smaller than 2 then the pile will assume reached this thing we have already discussed. And what is done in this case next step is calculate the degradation of modulus of subgradation using the relation given by Prakash. So, like equation number 1 after fitting the data this, this equation has been prepared based on experimental data conducted. So, here you can, could see that A value is minus uh, is plus 0 0.052 and B is minus 0 0.48 in equation number 1. So, this equation 5 give the, give the degradation for steep clay and um, normalized modulus of horizontal subgrade reaction in with shear strain. So, this is like uh, this equation it is with respect to the pile material 
and unrent shear strength of clay. So, the equation number 5 will be uh, because it is a generic equation which has been uh, uh, for many uh, types of fine material though what has been proposed by uh, M. Widwin is depends on A and B depends on the pile material, but this is from lot of test data. Then same the case for soft clay, for the soft clay the modulus of subgrade reaction is not constant rather it varies with the depth, it increase with the depth and it is quite similar to the case for cohesionless soils. So, similar to cohesionless soils this could be represented k x equal to k h x and which can be further written as you may be aware eta h into x eta h into x which we have already discussed. A pile is considered long pile in this case if l by t is greater than equal to 5. So, the factor will be t instead of r even it is for clay. So, for the soft clay we use t factor while for stiff clay we use r factor. T is the relative stiff factor in soils for which the modulus of subgrade reaction increases linearly with the depth. The next deflection and moment calculation is same as piles in cohesionless soils. Here the degradation in modulus of subgrade reaction is calculated using the relation given by Prakash and Chen and this relation is listed here. So, this is similar uh, relation the earlier relation was for uh, uh, this relation was for the stiff clay and this equation 6 is for uh, soft clay. So, this is only the difference and now we have the data degradation relations for stiff and soft clay we go further. Further steps are given here to develop the lo load deflection curves. For example, first decide the range of kh max determined and for the stiff clay it has been determined that range of kh max is between 300 to 300 to 600 SU where SU is nothing but undrained shear strength. Okay. And a procedure that how to develop these curves has been given here select a value of yz for which qz will be computed. So, the value uh, for, for the given load yz uh, uh, for which uh, the uh, let us say a value of yz is given qz is our unknown and yz is that uh, uh, you can say uh, given values which may be permissible value of the deflection. And once you know the value of yz then you can calculate the strain from this relation gamma equal to uh, y divided by 1.67 b. So, for the given permissible value of deflection you can find the maximum strain and once the strain is known calculate the soil modulus k h using equation 5 and k h max where need to be substituted 300 s u. So, k h max is known in this equation in this equation 5 k h max is known gamma is known. So, naturally using equation 5 you can find the value of k h once k h is known to you then calculate the relative stiffness factor r where r if you recall r was simply uh, E i over k h into 1 by 4. So, this way you can find the value of r and calculate lateral load and then repeat steep steps 1 to 5 for all the deflection at which lateral loads are desired. Again repeat step 1 to 6 for another value of s uh, k h max as 600 s u and once you have these then you, you can draw the load deflection curve. The load deflection curve are shown in this uh, figure here. Here the value of lower bound is for the case when you have s u equal to 300 while upper bound is the case when you have s u equal to 600 and this is measured value which is lying in between and this is the predicted. So, so, so this way we can draw the load. Similar the are the step for what we call the soft clay. In case of soft clay the range of kh max is higher and then it could be up to 800 and 1800 su where again su is undrained shear strength and procedure is the similar steps it is quite same first calculate the value of yz that uh, for uh, which q we need to find the value of qz. Then for this calculate strain and strain is for the given deflection can be calculated from equation step 2. Calculate the soil modulus k h using equation 6 instead of 5 and then k h max need to be used there 800 s u. So, for we can find for this strain and k h max the value of k h. Once k h is known calculate the relative stiffness factor t. Here t need to be calculated as 
E i divided by eta h to the power 1 by 5. So, once T is known calculate lateral load for the selected deflection repeat steps 1 to 5 for all deflections at which lateral loads are desired. And finally, this step 1 to 6 need to be repeated for kh max equal to 1800 and plot the load deflection curves as shown in this figure. So, you could see the load deflection curves are given here. So, you have again uh, lower bound and upper bound and the measure and then py curves are. So, you have the deflection and the load. So, what you can have once you have the load deflection curve ready for given deflection you can find the load or for given load you can predict the deflection. So, which is used uh, by practicing engineering. So, so, this is was the case for the clay. Now, we discuss the design procedure for piles in cohesionless soils though the similar processes will be procedure will be applicable for cohesive or clay also uh, what difference it will come we will discuss. Let us discuss for the first for cohesionless soil. What need to be done in the design procedure and uh, this in fact this procedure will be applicable as it is for analysis also. So, for the design uh, what is the case in the case of pile? The, in the case of uh, when you are say that I want to, uh, to design a pile for lateral load or let us say a, a pile subjected to lateral load and moment, lateral load is given to you, moment applied is given to you, then you it is said uh, it is told that design the pile. That means simply you need to find the diameter of the pile for cylindrical piles. So, uh, design here is um, meaning is that uh, what is the diameter of the pile and the diameter of the pile should satisfy all the checks. So, that means it should be safe, it should be able to carry the load safely. Here one important point is there that length of the pile of course, will influence your design, but it is assumed that length of the pile will be fixed from other criteria and your other criteria may include um, you have this uh, whether you have end bearing pile, whether you have friction pile or uh, there could be the case in other criteria where uh, the, uh, the length may require from vertical load carrying capacity. Vertical load carrying capacity for static load we have already discussed in detail in first two lectures on pile foundations. So, so what is the steps here? First step is determine the load on the top of the pile. Second step determine the soil profile and estimate a proper value of k or eta h for the soil type. So, k value is required for clay and eta h is required for sand or we can say k is, is the value when you assume that modulus of subgradation is constant with the depth and eta h is the value which is required when you assume it is linearly varying with the depth. Third is select trial section with known E i and its width. So, trial section here is saying that assume basically step third is telling you that assume some value of uh, diameter, diameter is let us say d. So, you start your calculation assuming some diameter d equal to some uh, let us say 60 centimeter or 600 mm or whatever 300 mm. So, you can start once you fix the value of diameter then i particular for cylindrical piles can be simply calculated pi by 64 d 4. And once you know the i the material of the pile is given E is known. So, then once i is calculated then you can calculate the value of E i. And once E i is known then we can calculate the value of relative stiffness factor T which using this equation. And as I mentioned earlier also this equation though small looks very small, but very important for lateral load of piles for the sandy soil or for cohesionless soils. Once T is calculated then make sure that the value of Z max that is L s by T is greater than 5. Normally, this check is ok. If this check is not satisfied then you cannot use the theory for long piles and we, we may not be able to design for the lateral load and then we need to do some other calculation. So, for when Z max is greater than 5 ls is normally determined from other consideration that is for depth or bedrock and uh, this we already discussed. Then estimate the fixity factor lambda of the pilot yeah this is important the value of lambda is between 0 to 1. So, as we discussed uh, in the last lecture that the value of lambda is nothing but is defining fixity condition of the pile head. If your pile head is free then lambda will be 0 
free under rotation it is already free for deflection but if it is free for deflection but restrained against rotation completely restrained then we say that lambda should be taken as 1 if it is partially restrained then the value of lambda will be 0 and 1 and once you have fixed the value of uh, then deflection can be calculated using this relation y x equal to c y q z t cube or e i and you this equation because value of c y is not constant rather the c y will keep varying with the depth. So, as a result y x will also vary with the depth. So, you, you will be interested in the maximum value of the deflection y max and this maximum value of the deflection which is coming from this equation in step 6 should be less than the permissible value. If permissible value is given to you then it is fine otherwise you can assume a permissible value of 12.5 mm for the pile. Okay. So, then so that what is C y now what is C y? C y we already discussed in the theory that C y was nothing but A y minus 0 0.93 I can write it again back. So, though it has been discussed in the last slides that C y is was A y minus 0 0.93 lambda b y. So, this way you can calculate the value of C y and calculate. Same thing we do for moment determine the bending moment m x which can be calculated C m q z t where C m is nothing but a m minus 0 0.93 lambda b m where a m and b m are the moment coefficients. Then we need to apply a check here that bending stresses you of using this equation you find the maximum bending moment and for the maximum bending moment get the maximum stress which is mx max divided by i into b where b is nothing but a uh, diameter or width of the uh, this will be diameter of the pile and this value of f which you calculate naturally should be less than the permissible value of stress norm uh, this is bending stress. So, it should be less than the bending stress. Then you have soil reaction. Soil reaction can be calculated using this rel relation P x equal to C p q z by t, where C p itself is a p minus 0 0.93 lambda b p. So, using this relation you can find the value of soil reaction which will be varying with the depth. And at any depth the re soil reaction P x should be less than allowable soil reaction that which is P a. So, P x should be less than P a. So, at any depth it is yeah it is written here that you need to apply a check that B P x should be less than P a or equal to P a and B is nothing but width or diameter of pile phi is angle of internal friction and gamma is unit weight. P a is calculated from this relation where gamma B into x that means as the x increases your allowable soil deflection will also increase. So, the value of P x and naturally as uh, we discussed earlier that these coefficient uh, this coefficient a, a, a y b y then you have this a m b m and then a p b p they need to be taken from the tables charts which we have discussed for a particular depth. And in this case p x will also will vary with the depth, but not linearly. However, the allowable load p a will vary with the depth linearly and you could see that p a values are increasing. So, that means it is true that as you go at higher depth the soil reaction are going to increase at higher depth, but at the same time your allowable soil reaction is also increasing with the depth. So, this is the difference between this check and other check. In this check pile uh, the deflections and permissible deflection will not vary with the depth it is constant with the depth. Similarly, the permissible uh, stress will remain constant with the depth. Here the allowable soil reaction is not constant rather it will vary with the depth and you are uh, you get higher values higher allowable value at higher depth. Okay. So, at every depth we need to apply this check P x P a should be this check should be satisfied at all the depths while uh, the step 6 and 7 can be applied only at the points where you get the maximum deflection or and maximum bending stress. So, these was the stress for cohesionless soils and uh, this uh, completes uh, this lecture and this uh, references most of the stuff which we have discussed today is uh, from another book by from Samsar Prakash Soil Dynamics 
and then there is a uh, what we discussed modulus of subgrade uh, degradation of modulus of subgrade reaction that is from a research paper given by Prakash and Chen titled as a non-linear lateral pile deflection predictions in clays. So, with this uh, I complete. Uh, so, uh, almost a theory part uh, of the this uh, piles on lateral load is come uh, piles subjected to lateral load is completed and in the next lecture we are going to discuss some of the numerical examples where in those examples directly whatever we have discussed in the theory will be covered. So, equations and other things. So, I will rather go a bit quick, uh, uh, quickly for those examples because they are be directly based on this theory. And with this I thank you very much for this uh, lecture and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks.